my fellow Elden Lords. So in this video, we will be talking about the Prince of Death staff. Uh, I'm thinking of making a build centered around this staff because the Prince of Death staff is centered entirely around death sorcery. Uh, very rare, few in number spells uh, that and, and we'll cover those. I have most of them, because uh, taking a look at some of the other spells, they're kind of just different versions of the same exact spell you already have. Uh, but we'll get into that. So the Prince of Death stat is a very late game item. You can only get it uh, in the Deep Roots Depths. And the Deep Roots Depths is way over here. And in order to get into the Deep Roots Depths, I completely forgot how to get there. I'll, I'll have to take a look and show you at the end of the video. But anyway, so the Prince of Death said, what makes it so special? Here we go. So at maxed out, this is plus 24. It goes up to plus 25, but I don't have another dragon stone. But just take a look at it. So this requires boosting your faith as well as intelligence. That's the drawback of this. Uh, I'm a level 134. I respect all my points to kind of well round what you would need in order to use this staff to its fullest potential. So I put 60 in intelligence and faith. So they're both the same. I that that leaves me with 25 points in mind and 23 in vigor. You probably don't need the vigor if you're just going full mage, but that's what this is. So if you only have the bare minimum requirement for faith, and you only boost your intelligence, this staff isn't going to be very powerful. You need to boost your faith as well as intelligence. Because when I was testing this before, I, I, I ha only had boosted intelligence. And it was weaker than Lusat's staff. But take a look at it now. This is the maxed out Lusat's staff. With 60 intelligence. Sorcery scaling 314. This is the one away maxed out Prince of Death Staff, 320 sorcery scaling. This is one away from being maxed, and it's still stronger than this one. So another video I said this is the strongest staff. Technically, this would make it the strongest staff, uh, but it also boosts death sorcery as well. Now take it what you will, and I think it's stronger than Lusat's, because it also f scales in faith. And like I said, if you only scale your intelligence and not your faith, this will be weaker. So in order to get the most bang up for your buck for this stat, you need to a very particular build for t both schools of magic. And what sucks is that all the spells, all the death spells are actual sorceries and not incantations. So, and those need faith to use as well. So I'm going to just show you a glintstone pebble. Now you already know from the numbers that Lusat is now weaker than the Prince of Death. So I guess when it comes to power, this is now stronger. Okay. Lusat's in the right. Glintstone pebble. How much damage? First hit. 532. 532 first hit for Lusat's. 544. So even with the uh, the boosted all sorceries, the boosted magic damage for Lusats, it's still just a little behind Prince of Death Staff. Just a little behind. And I wasn't even using Death Sorcery, I was using a normal spell. So let's take a look at what the death spells are. There are a few of them. Uh, I'm showcasing two of them because there's an upgraded Rancor call, uh, but according to some people who've been testing more than I, the upgraded Rancor call costs more magic for no extra damage. And that's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it at all. So here we go. We have the Rancor call. This is actually a really cool spell. It's a lot like the Rock Sling. I don't know if it has stun damage though. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So that's at 816. So now let's use Lusats. 
seven twelve. Nice. Can't really use it at close range. At all. The next spell is uh, the second worst one, Tibia Summons. It has a great concept, the, the execution is poor. I do not recommend ever getting this spell. So the problem with this spell, you couldn't really see it there, I'll try it again. Um, let's aggro him. Come on. Come chase me. There we go. See that? It missed. And it only missed because he was chasing me after the summon was complete. Like, like partway during the summon, he was running. So, it... And it doesn't even do that much damage. You'd have to use it twice against these guys. So Tibia summons, summons three skeletons, and then they do a melee hit, but they don't track the target. It's single one spot. So if you're f facing an enemy that doesn't even move, yeah, it's a cool spell, but it doesn't do a lot of damage. You'd have to summon it multiple times. Rancor Call is way better. Because it has a series of projectiles, it seems to kind of have a pushback, but if they get too close, it won't even hit them. So they do have their ups and downs, but Rancor Call seems to be the absolute only death spell that is actually worth using. Uh, now there is one more death spell, and that I do have anyway. I'm going to show that real quick. Uh, I'm going to keep that. Uh, it is absolutely worthless. Absolutely worthless. So, Fia's Mist. It is, uh, death magic. But the thing about Fia's Mist is that... Do you know what it's weak to death magic? Any takers? The only thing weak to death magic... Are tarnished. What enemies are tarnished in this game? I don't know. These guys? These guys weak? No, 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 no. I don't see anything. I guess they're not tarnished. Uh, do you know? Do you, do you know? Do you know what's tarnished? Other NPCs, other players, specific enemies in the game that are usually bosses. So this death spell can't even be used for a majority of the enemies in the game. You can only use this against specific bosses, or in PvP, but if you're using it in PvP, that's too slow, and it's too close. Let's hold it. Extend the range that it goes out. That's actually pretty big. That's actually really big. How far does that go? Wow, that actually spreads quite far. So, you'd only use this in PvP, but, like I said, it's too close. Once the enemy gets that close and you're not protecting yourself, you're basically dead uh, in just a few hits. So, it's not even worth using in PvP. You're better off using Comet Azur, which, you know, is easily avoidable. So, overall, the thing about the Prince of Death staff, it is powerful. Technically, it is more powerful than Lusat's staff when it's maxed. But only if you're completely content and, well, 100% uh, going into investing in faith. If you don't invest faith with your intelligence, this is a weak staff, and you're better off just using loose acts. But if you're okay with... Wow, hello, good sir. How you doing today? Eating ass. Well, don't, don't, don't touch me, man. I'm making a video. I'm busy. I'm working for free. My channel isn't monetized. This is nice. That was actually really nice. That was really showy. I forgot what I was saying. But yeah, you'd have to invest in faith and intelligence. 
And it's a good staff. I mean, when maxed out completely at plus 24, it goes up to plus 25. But it, it takes so much. It takes so much to get the most out of this staff. So while, yes, it is maybe the most powerful staff, it requires uh, boosting a very strange build. And I'm level 134. I require 118,000 runes. Look at the rest of my stats. I had to fully invest in intelligence and faith with just a few left over to go into mind. I could have gone fully into mind instead of vigor, but is it worth it? That's up to you. So anyway, let me know how you guys feel about the Prince of Death staff. Uh, am I going to use it? Uh, I'm fighting uh, Godfrey the First Elden Lord right now. I don't know if I want to use his staff against him, but I'll definitely try since I'm struggling. But yeah, let me know how you feel about it. Would you use this? Would you go all in for that? Because keep in mind, since you upgraded your faith, that means you can use all the incantations as well. There's a whole bunch of fire incantations. So if you're a full-on mage, you basically have all the magic in the world uh, to use with no limits. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And uh, I'll leave a clip after this to show you where to get the Prince of Death staff. And after that, as always, have a great day. Okay, so this is how to get the Prince of Death stuff. So, in Nokron, the Eternal City, at the very end of it, you will face a boss. After you defeat the boss at the end of Nokron, you will get into a coffin. You ride the coffin, and it'll take you directly to Deep Root Deaths, which is much lower. How do you get into Nokron, the Eternal City? Well, you can only get there after defeating General Radon. After you defeat General Radon, a meteor hits the Earth in Lower Eastern West Limgrave. Right here. After you defeat General Radon, you go right here, which is next to Fort Hate West, and there'll be a chasm. You go down there, that gets you to Nokron. At the end of Nokron, you get to the depths, and I will show you where the staff is. And here's the coffin that we ride. Huzzah! Deep Roots Death is pretty cool. There's a lot of giant ants here. Not a fan of that, but eh. So you're gonna ride these tree limbs. Uh, they look pretty healthy, I guess. <laughs> and then you're gonna try to take the tree limb that doesn't go immediately to your death because you know exactly where you're going. Nice. I think it was that tree limb over there. Okay, round two. Uh, so you're not gonna take that route that I just showed you. You're gonna take this other one right over here. <laughs> it's kind of obvious if you know where you're going. I mean, look at that. I just made the right decision when I knew what the wrong decision was. That's how you make right decisions. You go right, not left, unless left is right, which today it is because this was the left branch. So you go to the left branch and you go straight. And you're going past all these ants. At least I think they're ants. I'm gonna call them ants. They're flying. But they also have stingers. I don't think ants have stingers. Are these hornets? I'm pretty sure they're ants, but I'm not a bug guy. Oh. There's a side of grace right over here. So you know you're going the right way because there's a finger reader. She wants to give you the... Uh, <laughs> she wants to suck in your fingers and tell you your future. It's a scam. So you go right underneath this giant tree into the white water. The white water turns it back to normal if you play uh, that one vampire game that's on PlayStation. So you go past this dude who's trying to breathe fire. And you're gonna climb onto this branch right here. That is the wrong branch. You're gonna circle around this building and go up this ramp. There's a lot of stuff down here. I urge you to explore. Here's another giant. Go up this branch and see that building over there on the left? That's where you're going. There's a giant right there. He's on the other side of it. So up here. Turn around. 
and there'll be a corpse right here. And very appropriate. Hallelujah. And there you go. The, the, the Prince of Death staff will be on his corpse. The Prince of Death is uh, further on. Uh, it's kind of the boss. Uh, the Prince of Death has a body but no soul. So you fight other things instead. So if your build is high enough when you get here, you can probably use the staff against him. That's up to you. But anyway, that's how you get the Prince of Death staff. Hope you guys enjoy. There's a turtle down there. But it doesn't have a bell. As always, have a great day.